Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're staying safe and healthy out there. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. It's great to meet you. I make tutorial videos here on YouTube every week where I'm playing around in photo editing software and trying to take an image from, you know, flat to fluffy. I don't know, from zero to hero, from something that I liked shooting but didn't really look how I wanted it to look to something that I consider more attractive. Anyway, today I am talking about Luminar 4.4. Point three. It is the latest update. It is out today for Luminar 4, which is by far my favorite editing app. It has some cool new stuff. It's exciting. I'm going to get into that in a minute. It is an update. That means it's free. If you own Luminar 4 today, it's a free update. I'll show you how to do that. By the way, if you go check for it and you don't have it yet, just hang tight. Usually what happens I've seen in the past is it's kind of a rolling rollout around the globe, uh, I'm assuming, so that the servers don't get overwhelmed. But it is a free update. You will get it. Patience, my friend. Patience. Um, I'm recording this a couple of days before release. I've been playing with this thing for a couple of days now, and I'm having a lot of fun. Let's get into it. Here is the user interface. It's slightly different. The first thing you will see is there is now a search function built into Luminar. If you click that, you can start searching. As you can see, input a partial name. Well, tell you what, you know what I really want to find? I want to find this photo I took in Las Vegas that was in my files. Hey, look at that. One photo found with Las Vegas in its name. I click on it and there it is. If I come over here and click on info, you can see this is a previously edited photo that I've got in my library that has the word Las Vegas in the title. So that's pretty cool. Here's something else to think about. Um, you can look it up by file type. I used to shoot Olympus uh, cameras years ago, and so the Olympus RAW files are .orf extension. Well, maybe I want to find my .orf extension. Hey, I've got two Olympus RAW files. Let's click on them. Wait a minute. That's not an Olympus RAW file. That's a JPEG. Oh, you know what it did? Look here, my friends. ORF is in colorful. It's just how I name the file. So it's picking that up. This, on the other hand, is a .ORF. So if you just want the Olympus RAW files, use the dot first and then ORF, and now you have one photo. You can also search by date. Let's say you want you knew you took something in January. What year was that that I was in London or whatever? Here we go. I got three results from January 2017. Hey, 44 from January 2018. Well, look at that. That's a bunch of London stuff. I knew I was there in January. I couldn't remember the year. I'm play acting, of course. So you can search those sort of things. You've got a lot of flexibility. And of course, you can clear your search if you want to, and then just hit back up here to get back. If you want to go back to your main library, just go back and click on all photos. Okay, so search is the first feature. The second thing I want to talk about is 500px. A lot of photographers use the 500px website to share their work. You now have integration where you go to export. I generally don't do this, but you can you know, go straight to Flickr or LinkedIn, SmugMug, but now you have 500px. So if you click on that, it'll take you there and you'll need to log in, etc., in order to authenticate and prove that it's you and it's your account. But that allows you to post from Luminar straight into 500px, another new innovation in 4.3. Now, the next thing they're talking about are stability and performance improvements. I am finding that it's more stable, although admittedly, I have not really had a lot of challenges with the product. It's been really stable and fairly responsive for me, but they're saying that it uses less memory and that it's gonna be more responsive because of that, including raw files opening more rapidly. I haven't seen a marked difference. I am, however, on a pre-release copy. So uh, just to clarify, your mileage may vary, maybe is the best way of putting it, but they're saying that there's a, quite a bit of performance increase, and because it uses less memory, it makes the images more responsive. So that's another innovation in 4.3. Okay, the next thing to talk about is improvements to the looks tool. If you click on that, um, these are some user looks that I've been building and playing around with. In the past, you've had to click on each one to see how it looks on your photo, but now, and many of you have asked for this for a long time, I'm glad that you have, and I'm really glad that they did it. You have previews. You can hover over the look, and it will display what it looks like on your photo. So you can say, well, that looks pretty cool. What about that? Ooh, this golden hour two looks pretty good. Yeah, look at that. Super saturated. How about this twilight one, et cetera, et cetera. So you can go through now and just have a look. Like here's a crazy, again, super colorful over the top. These are experimental looks I've been building, just to be clear. But as you hover over them, they will preview on the image. And then, of course, like normal, you can click and it will apply. But that's a new thing. It's going to save you a lot of time because you'll be able to scroll through these presets slash looks and get a quick idea how it'll look on your photo thanks to the, uh, the new previews. 
Okay, the next thing is the crop tool has been improved. Now, you can, in, in the current version, 4.2, and the new version, 4.3, you can get to the crop tool there, but it's also been moved over here underneath lens and geometry. And when you click on it, you'll see this little menu opens up. So you've got the aspect ratios here. They used to be in the upper left. You can come through and pick your aspect ratio. I really like 16 by nine. If you watch any of my videos, you kind of know that but you can do some cool stuff here. You can flip the photo, right? You can uh, horizontally or vertically. And of course you can rotate the photo and you can see that the crop window is staying with it. But there's also this where you can actually transpose the cropped ratio. So you're actually rotating the crop and uh, going back and forth that way. So that's pretty cool. Then of course, when you're ready, you can just say done and apply that crop to your photo. Okay, the next thing, and some of you are gonna love this. In the past, people have said, you know, Jim, it'd be really cool if they let us store our own skies in Luminar, and I didn't really advocate it, although you could do it. There was a hack where you could kind of go find the folder and stick them in there, but I didn't really uh, support doing that personally because your skies being embedded in Luminar when you get a new edition like today, those skies, if you don't have them backed up, are gonna get wiped out because when you add the new software, it doesn't know that you have the skies in there. So having said that, they've fixed at least part of that problem and this is really cool. When you go to sky replacement, sky selection, show custom skies, you'll notice I have Gem Sky 1 and Gem Sky 2. These are my skies, this is not something that's coming in Luminar, but if you click on the show custom skies, you can see it just takes you right to a custom sky folder and you can stick your own skies in there. Now, I've got a couple over here on my desktop. Let me run and get them if I could find my mouse. Okay, here we go. I've got Jim Sky 3 and 4 that I'm now adding to that custom sky folder. So now, when I go to uh, sky selection, you can see Jim Sky 3 and Jim Sky 4 are there. So now, my skies are basically built into Luminar. Here we go. I want to be clear about this, and I don't know the answer, and that is when the next version of Luminar, Luminar comes out, what will happen to that custom sky menu? I don't know, I haven't had a chance to ask them. So the uh, really what I'm getting at here is, even though you store your skies in Luminar, please, please, for your own sanity, make sure you have an original copy of them somewhere else that you save on a backup drive. That's a smart thing to do for disaster recovery purposes anyway, and I'm sure you back up your photos, but don't forget to back up your skies as well. It's great you can store them here and you get easy access to them because I can say, well, I don't like Sky 4. I really, I wanna try Sky 2, see how that looks. And then I stick Sky 2 on there and let it swap out and there you go. But um, if you don't have these saved somewhere else and something happens, you're gonna be really upset with yourself. So that's a cool new feature. I'm really excited about it because it's gonna make it easier than in the past when I had to go to a folder on my desktop and all that sort of stuff. So that's a, uh, that's a wonderful new addition to Luminar 4.3. And of course, just to be clear, you can still go down here and say load custom sky image, and then you can go to whatever folder where you may have some skies. If you don't wanna store them in Luminar, that's fine. You can continue to keep them on your desktop like I've done in the past. Next up is augmented sky. A couple of things. Number one, same thing here, show custom sky objects. You can do the same thing. They've got the same custom folder for sky objects, as you can see, as they do for skies. Now, I don't really use the sky objects a whole lot. It's fun to play with, but it's not something I really do very frequently. However, you can now store those objects in there. And there's a new object as well, which is their space shuttle. And if I choose that, you can see that I can ch uh, choose place object, move it over here, line it up a little bit, Here's a cool thing. You can now flip objects. So I can flip the object and flip it around. Uh, this is probably not the best sample uh, photo to show that, but you can flip it back and forth if the object needs to be flipped or reversed within the photo. And one other thing that I think is super cool and really handy is they've got a transparent mask that's visible while you're masking. Let me show you. I did a couple of minor things to this photo. I'm gonna go over here to structure and say negative just to smooth it out and give it a boost. If you've seen my videos before, I do that a lot with water and sky simply because I like to smooth them out. So let's say I did that. It's currently applying to the whole photo, but of course I wanna brush mask it in just to the water. So this is where that new feature comes in. As I paint, you will see a transparent red mask show up to indicate to me visibly where I've already painted. Here, let's go and check it out. You can see there's my red little mask just being happy as can be, uh, and it's showing me where I've painted without me having to go hit that window. Uh, not the window, the eyeball. 
I can still go do that. There it is. But by the way, you notice I missed a few spots, so I can come back and go over those, and it still shows where I've previously masked. So it's maintaining that. Um, which I think is a really handy little tool. It's a great way to just kind of get better visibility into where your mask is at, as you're doing it. I love that. It's an exciting new feature, I think, and it's really cool. So now I'm done and that mask has been applied and I got to watch it the whole time. And another thing is that they've improved localization. So some of the translations for various global languages have been enhanced, which is really going to come in handy for some of our uh, friends in other parts of the world. So you may be saying, hey, how do I update my copy? You just go to Luminar 4 and check for updates. I'm already running this uh, this demo copy, so I'm going to do this on my real copy of Luminar 4.2 right after this video goes live. But um, that's, uh, that's my preview look or first look at Luminar 4.3 better improved masking, better crop tool, uh, looks previews, enhancements to uh, objects as well as skies, as well as storing them within the app, performance improvements, 500px integration, photo search. There's a lot of cool stuff. Again, it's a free update. Go get it if you haven't already. And by the way, if you don't have Luminar 4, get it at the link down below. And um, thanks for watching, my friends. I hope you have a lot of fun editing your photos. I'll be back soon with more videos as you would probably expect if you've been here for any length of time. I make several a week. I'll be back soon with more. So thank you, my friends. I appreciate it. Enjoy this free update to Luminar 4.3, and I'll see you really soon. Have a great day. Thanks for watching, and adios.